Hi all, Magnus Carlsen has been playing some brilliant chess recently. Let's have a look at one of his recent games. This is against Anish Giri. So they had uh, a lot of banter on Twitter over the last few years. Uh, let's have a look. The uh, score of Anish Giri has been very good compared to other grandmasters. Very, very difficult to uh, for, for Magnus to beat uh, Anish Giri at the classical time control historically. Uh, so that's also interesting. C4 for Magnus, so English opening, E5. We have knight C3, knight F6, knight F3, knight C6. So this is the English four knights opening because the four knights have come out and about. Okay, so G3, D5, C takes, knight takes, bishop G2, and bishop C5. This has become a trendy move recently. In the past, knight B6 was kind of the routine move, for example, White castles, this position might place for b4, which gives that bishop b2 potential, as well as b5. And here, this is thought to be about even. So, this is an interesting uh, new nook kind of idea in this line. White castles, black castles, d3, h6. Another move here seen quite a lot is rook e8. For example, bishop d2, knight takes, bishop takes, knight d4, b4. This is thought to be about equal. So h6, knight takes, queen takes, a3, a5, bishop d2, queen e6. We have rook c1 hitting the bishop. Bishop is protected. Bishop c3. Now knight d4. So in fact, now after e3, all the knights have disappeared from the position, leaving just the bishops. That's quite an interesting scenario. The knights are quite versatile. They can hit both colours of squares. The the bishops are more simple in nature. Uh, you know where you are more without the tricky knights. So is there enough dynamic potential here for white to gain a significant advantage? Now, this next move, bishop d6, <clears throat> appears to be mainly designed against d4. You know, if d4 here, maybe e4 is possible. Uh, so it's interesting though that the central tension is kept with quite an aggressive looking move. Queen h5. We have now quite a bit of pressure on the black position. c6 is played, which blunts that uh, bishop, takes away the d5 square. But now a really interesting move indeed. The kind of iconic move of this game. I wonder if you can guess what Magnus played if you haven't seen this game before. You might want to pause the video here. Okay. F4. This does weaken E3. And also you might think D3 is weak as well. Black took. There's some interesting alternatives to taking here. F6, I believe we can rule out. White can play F takes. Taking here. And after these exchanges, there's rook c5, and this leads white to a big advantage. So that's too dangerous for black to entertain f6. e4, I believe we can also rule out. It's only got a little tactical trick. Uh, if d takes, that's a big advantage. If white does take here, then okay, fine. This position is, is fine for black. But the move which really might be quite serious uh, to consider is f5, which stops this f pawn it does block in the c8 bishop so this position uh maybe with queen f7 this should be about equal however in the game it seems anish was uh interested in winning some material uh he played e takes and mengs doesn't play e takes here plays rather with the uh, g pawn which does have a big upside that the G file is opened up. If you use the G pawn, this is quite an aggressive G file. Uh, so very interesting position, G takes. Let's have a quick look at E takes, check. And in fact, uh, here, okay, this is poison, or is it? Yes, it is. But black doesn't have to play queen E free check. Uh, so if black does something else, 
sorry after e takes instead of check black does something else and should be okay here there isn't too much uh, danger for black perhaps a move like f5 for queen f7 again might be plausible so what happened in the game is really this quite exciting g file has been created this road to the black king but yes e3 is hanging that is taken and here uh, it's far too dangerous to take on d3 rook d8 was played if queen takes d3 then rook cd1 and just winning the bishop on d6 so here rook d8 was played rook c e1 queen c5 challenging the queen the queens uh before we get into queen c5 if we just re-examine queen takes d3 here then f5 is dangerous for example bishop f8 and here this is uh absolutely winning yeah this skewering the queen and the rook so that that is far too dangerous and here if say queen c4 then actually that f pawn is becoming a very dangerous form pawn and absolutely winning in these lines with especially with the g file it's like for example here double check and mate so it can be absolutely lethal this position uh so yeah black dare not take on d3 so queen c5 Magnus keeps the key queens on with f5 and also of course this f6 is a continual idea bishop f8 blacks on the defensive bishop e4 supports both d3 and f5 rook d5 trying to offer the exchange sacrifice to try and defend Magnus refuses with a beautiful looking move rook f3 this means not only keeping a support of f5 but the rooks can potentially double with rook g1 rook fg3 later uh, the alternative if white had taken the exchange bishop takes d5 this position is actually white's only got a small edge although the exchange up black's pretty solid here uh, with the extra pawn as well and the bishop pair so uh rook f3 avoiding winning that exchange that's offered or rather taking the exchange that's offered b5 sometimes with the idea of b4 black is kind of cramped as well in this position that c8 bishop wants to do something rook g1 now white here looks as though there's threats like queen takes h6 but with the queen eyeing g1 in alignment with g1 this is not really possible rook a7 was played uh let's have a look at a few options here though one or two b4 there is actually in this position bishop takes g7 for rook fg3 and then this crashes through for white absolutely crushing as an example uh here if we follow this uh instead of king f8 if queen f8 you can see how powerful the attack is after queen takes h6 this is crashing through so uh rook a7 and it's here it's important not to play queen takes h6 here bishop f6 was played if queen takes h6 then there's can you see what black plays in this position okay queen takes g1 check takes away that pinner of the pawn for black to take here winning so white has to trade carefully bishop f6 constrains the f pawn as well and can start to build up the pressure again g6 is played here if b4 then actually in this position rook takes and queen g4 for rook g3 all converging on g7 without any f pawn because of that cramping bishop f6 so this rook can indirectly defend this position is absolutely uh, devastating why it's getting a big advantage so uh g6 was tried trying to exploit the pinned pawn on f5 uh, so now the queen drops back there is actually a combinatory solution but it requires extreme accuracy here the combinatory solution instead of dropping the queen to h3 is rook takes g6 after this 
white. Uh, let's say rook g7, bishop takes. Uh, this is crushing, yeah, because of g7, winning the exchange, being the exchange, absolutely winning position. But there's some tricks here on bishop g7. White has to find, it seems, bishop c3 here. That renews ideas of f6, but white has to find this. If white plays, for example, bishop h4, this gives counterplay after check. This position, queen takes b2 check, for example, queen e5. And there's counterplay here. For example, f6, there's actually queen g5 check. So this is yeah showing black has some resources behind the scenes. So rook takes g6 would have to be calculated very carefully and accurately. So queen h3 instead is more practical. We have rook d6, queen h4, pressure still hugely on. Here, if d4, rook takes this position, white is also getting a big advantage. Uh, so that's also interesting, d4 maybe. Rook takes, f takes, uh, on bishop takes h3, you might think there's actually g takes a wonderful tactic. The king's taken out of its cave, and then there's discovered a check. Yeah, bishop takes d4, so it ends up with a big advantage there. So yeah, it's interesting, this d4 resource as well here. So queen h4, though, was played. And Anish gives up the exchange, rook takes f6. If rook a d7, f takes, f takes, rook takes g6, queen takes, this position, white's getting a big advantage again. Yeah, it's really quite a crushing attack. So rook takes f6, queen takes, bishop e7. And now here, there's no solution with a combination of rook takes g6. But there is a just picking up this pawn with a winning endgame, which is what Magnus did. Queen takes c6. Let's have a brief look. Rook takes here. The king is escaping, basically. Black's getting a big advantage. There's nothing much going on there. There's too much counterplay in this position as well with that active queen. Uh, so queen takes c6. Get the queens off. And this is the exchange up this position of course and in fact after f takes g6 a fixed there's another target that g6 pawn so a4 d5 b4 bishop e8 targeting the g6 pawn now here also there's an idea of rook f7 check and then uh, that's potentially leading to other good things so in fact g5 wasn't played but in fact bishop g5 shielding f7 but now a tactical move h4 so the bishop can't go to e7 without allowing rook f7 and also it's shielding g6 at the moment so black grabs this pawn rook takes g6 check king h7 rook c6 and there's not many places useful for that bishop here the bishop goes to g4 <clears throat> If it interferes with the rank, then check is crushing. It's going to be taking off that bishop soon. So uh, bishop g4, but again, these are like loose pieces now in the position. If the bishop had gone to b7, by the way, then again, check. And then, in, in fact, there's a kind of mating that here, threatening rook h5 uh, mating. So black would have to give up the bishop. That's hopeless. So yeah, it's become a pretty hopeless position. Bishop g4. Rook f4, yeah, targeting these bishops. Rook g7, and the game ended. I believe Anish Giri lost on time, but it is a, a lost position. An example continuation forcing things further off would be bishop g6 jack. Rook takes, rook takes, king takes, rook takes g4. The exchange up, mopping up these pawns. It's all over. Bond shouting. So, yeah, a nice attacking game from Lens Carlson there. The... Um, dynamism 
of the position despite the knights coming off was quite interesting and I believe both players discussed that a little bit in the post-mortem how maybe they weren't expecting it to be that exciting after the four knights of this variation all got swapped off and yet white with this kind of dynamic attacking gambit uh, created huge pressure on the black position I hope you enjoyed this game video if you did please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to become a member at chessworld.net to play other YouTubers. You can also test yourself on the variations covered in this game and other game videos from the improved menu, the puzzle books option, which has a link to the annotated game. Comments, questions, donations, see the description. Like, share, subscribe with the notification bell. Really appreciate it. Thanks very much.